take difficult emotions in and we talk them out like they are a regular conversation but today isn't going to be about emotions it's going to be about someone that I treasure very much at least the mind I value the mind very much that mind is going to be Nikola Tesla For anyone who hasn't heard of him he is you could say he's an engineer for sure a lot of people who probably have more admiration than I do will probably chop my head off for what I just said. He's not just an engineer, he's a developer, a creator, a, a mastermind, a mathematician. He's a lot of things. He's built a lot of things too. But what I wanted to capture today, I wanted to focus on something that I had been seeing on Instagram a lot. It's usually it's like this phrase about numbers. Nikola Tesla pointed out something about how if you, if only the world knew the secrets of three, six, and nine, you would basically unlock the secrets of the universe, that you'd have a big understanding, larger than most, about the universe. And what I wanted to do today was elucidate what he meant using my own logic of what I know of numbers and what I know of the universe. And as you know, the relationship theory, if you've been following from VR Productions, you know we don't talk just strictly abstract semantics over here. We break it down into practical, very practical, down-to-earth things. We make emotional connections using practical knowledge, all right? So without Further ado, I wanted to go into this 369 thing. Before we start, the very first thing I want to mention is here in the relationship theory, I talk about emotions and energy a lot. If you follow the relationship theory Instagram page, you know when I say emotions, I'm really just talking about energy. So if I say emotion, I really just mean energetical, really, that's all I'm saying. But we take things from an energetic perspective. And so, when we're looking at these numbers, the very first thing I want you to hold on to is, I'm coming from an energetic perspective with this. The second thing I want to come in with is, because everything is energy, everything is always moving, always. No matter how you depict something to be as still as it is, it's always shifting in state, even if it's solid. It still took shifting states to create a solid state, and so, when we're dealing with these numbers, know that the numbers are constantly moving, even if I'm drawing them. But if you were to take the numbers off of the page, you would still get a moving substance, okay? The third and last thing is going to be that take the numbers as symbols. Numbers are not things that you use to count. They mean something. They don't ever just depict the amount of something. An amount is an amount that we're talking about context when you want to talk about numbers, you need to refer to context. What are you counting? Why are you counting? That's what's more important than just a number. With that out of the way, I want to start with the very first thing that made sense to me. So I'm going to start with the number six and nine, and I'm going to draw it here, right? So and I'm going to draw it from my perspective, but it should still work out on your end. So, when it comes to the number six and nine, because we're thinking of these numbers as symbols, I think the numbers six and nine, because they have a similar loop, they are actually attributing themselves to a singular symbol. It's not a coincidence, as William Knight always says, there's no such thing as a coincidence. So, the fact that six is nine flipped or nine is six flipped and that saying each each either phrase doesn't matter is actually important. Uh, and this is why, because if I was to draw the number nine from my angle, try to make this as big as we possibly can, <laughs> make sure you can see it. But yes, if I was to draw the number nine and start from the circle, 
and then I make this line here. All right, so we have the number nine. That loop. So if I was to draw that number nine, from your angle, it's going to look like a six. Again, we're thinking of numbers as symbols, not things that you count. So the fact that it looks like a six is not important. This is when it gets important. When I draw the six on the other side. Now we're talking about something important. You might also recognize this symbol as the symbol that provisions and addendums use when they're referring to codes. If a, if a business or, or a corporation structure wants to refer to a particular line of code in their, I guess, governance or regulations, this is the code the symbol that they will use but the, it'll look like an s with a circle in the end now that kind of jumps to the end of what i'm trying to show you here <laughs> but anyway so now we have a six and nine and the six and nine is connected by a loop now remember when i said that the numbers are moving everything is always moving right so when you look at this six and nine it, i when i say the symbols are moving, I don't mean that they're shifting left or right and up and down. What I really mean is that these things are circling. This is what's happening. The six and the nine are spinning around. They're shifting. Now, this might also look like something you're familiar with when you think about the cosmos or the galaxy, or meteorology, or astrology. You, this might refer to a black hole, it might refer to a white hole, it might refer to any spatial entity, I guess, anything that in, that's in space that has a, it, there's a convergence or a convex, or just there's a center in which everything is pulled in or released out from. So. Consider that six and nine, they blend in the middle and all they're doing are rotating. So with that, consider this other thing. These, these are two symbols. These are still two symbols connected by a, a central point, a focal point in the center, and they are also rotating. So just because they're connected does not mean that they are not two individual or separate entities. They just make one thing. So where does three come in is where I'm leading to this. What I'm leading to is that six and nine, as they are in motion and rotating, their rotation, if you rotate it fast enough, it becomes its own solid object. So effectively, I know I'm gonna take a second sheet We're going to draw it again, but this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it as the, as it's unified. So we're going to do the nine again. I'm going to make that way bigger than that. Let me, <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll start with the circle. Do the nine. Do the six on the other end. So I'm gonna draw it as if it's rotating already and what it's what is it going to form if the image is complete? And this is effectively what you get. Now you might have seen this symbol somewhere else too. Like a lot of Video games and business logos, they all use these things. I think this is the kind of, this is even the image you get when you're using a, a dishwasher soap. You, you get this image right here. And yeah, this thing is still rotating. Now, whatever force and, and vibrations are created out of this, it really doesn't matter. The point is, if those two symbols rotate fast enough, they end up being three 
They end up being three. The force created by the two makes the three. The three becomes its own energy. So it becomes its own symbol. So this is what I really wanted to highlight here. So, but this is not the only thing I wanted to highlight because the unification of six and nine with this circle in the middle is also referring to something else that we're familiar with, but I don't think we've ever seen the scale to which it makes sense. And this is what I mean. It might be a hard pull. It might be something that you disagree with. Go ahead and drop a comment down below if you have a different thought about this. But I'm still going to go ahead and draw this thing because I think it's important. So what I'm about to refer to is the infinity symbol when it comes to six and nine its central point it rotating to make a third symbol on top of the two in motion so all three are in motion i'm gonna show you so we're, we are used to and i'm gonna try to split this into two pieces but we're used to seeing the infinite symbol something like the figure eight sure sure okay fine but even though it's not the figure eight, it's really a symbol eight referring to infinity. When you zoom into this point, is it really just that it crosses or is there something happening in the middle that, uh, that causes that cross to occur the way that it does? And what I would like to argue is yes, yes, there is something in the center. It's that very same symbol I just drew from earlier. You know, if I can fit this onto the, I'm sure I can fit this onto the page, but this will be the final thing I'm trying to address here today. Cause we never, we always see these symbols, but we never zoom in. We never scale the symbol or the item or the logo that we're really looking at. It's almost like when they put sounds in music that you, that you appreciate but you don't hear it until you listen to it about three to five times and then you start to hear the things that you're like oh i didn't notice that before right this is going to be the same thing so let me try to draw this here so we're going to zoom in on this focal point right in the middle of this symbol because it's not just an a cross that's happening here it's more so a convergence of a bunch of different elements it's like a fusion's core we have cores of elements but then what makes up a fusion well a fusion has its own core elements too it's not the same as just a, an element with a core right so we'll draw this center here make sure i make it big enough and then comes out that way goes out this way and you could say so sure imagine the loop goes the way that it does this one's going that way and then this one's going this way right and when it comes back when the infinite symbol because imagine the infinite symbol we imagine that there's a particular trajectory when the infinite symbol is going the way that it does and so imagine that it, it comes back. Now look. So you can still get the figure eight. It'll still go around the way that it does. But what you see in the center is that there is 
you could say a centrifugal force, although if I, I didn't draw the directions of the energy properly, but it really doesn't matter when you realize that the entire symbol is rotating anyway, so it has its own elements. And, and like I said, a fusion's core is a completely different element than just an element with a core. Those are two different properties or dealing with two different things. And not, this isn't the point of this video here. The only thing I'm trying to draw is that this symbol here, or this depiction of emotion, is the same thing as what I just drew earlier. It's the very same. It's, it's the very same symbol. I might have drawn the trajectory of, the ele of where the energy flows out from the center, but I don't actually know. But the point is that the symbol in its entirety, we know or we assume that there is an inflow or an outflow. I don't really care which one that is. Again, it's not the point of this video. The point is the symbol of infinity can be made with six and nine, idealizing that it rotates, making a third symbol. But then when you zoom out or zoom in, what you get are uh, even more symbols. It just keeps developing itself. So that is what I believe is the secret that Nikola Tesla was talking about with this whole three, six, nine thing. Now, if you've seen my other, my earlier videos and I did something about numbers, I think it was a love is a number and it is seven, then I described to you what I think certain numbers are. I break that down like it's a formula. Like one is infinity but it's also two but i if you want to go see that that'll be in the description box below itself but yeah that's what i think the secret is that nikola tesla was referring to now what would be the practical use of knowing this though what would be the point well it kind of goes back to what i was talking about when i mentioned that first of all it's energy and that it's moving and that numbers are not numbers specifically they're either points or symbols they're referring to something they are not something that you count you don't you don't count it because if you want to count it, that's contextual you, you don't see a number you shouldn't and that's that should be a, a rule for just life in general you should not see a number and immediately start counting as if there's any addition or subtraction to be made you probably want to look at it as if there's a message or there's something being said behind it, it makes more sense to think of it as a symbol before a number. Symbols first. Why? Because when you're alone and you, you're you moving about life, you are not looking at things as if they are to be counted. You're looking at them. You're trying to figure out what stuff around you means so that you can survive. It's about It's about survival. You're trying to live first. So you want symbols so that you know how to respond and react to things. That Right? So from a purely survival standpoint or basis, it's much more important to look at numbers as symbols first, and then you count whenever you want to count is up to you. But that is what I think the practical basis for it is. Numbers are symbols. So what they're supposed to mean, it really depends on where you are, what you're looking for at that point in time, but they do still have their own fundamental meanings. It's just, how do they apply to you? So anyway, that is this video of the relationship theory. I hope you got something out of this. I hope it's something that makes sense to you. I'm gonna put this back up. Yeah, and if it doesn't, hey, feel free to ask me some questions. I'm super happy to, to answer them. But that is this episode of the relationship theory, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day.